In this video, I'm going to show you how I add the cheapest rotary attachment to my CO2 laser. Links to the products I use will be in the description below. Now, rotary attachments are a way for you to engrave on rounded objects. I'll be adding it to my 60 watt CO2 laser. This is the rotary. These are some plugs that you need with a four prong. And I need those because this plug does not work with my current laser. But you'll want to be sure to check your laser and you can check right in this area on mine. This is the plug that plugs into the Y axis stepper motor. You actually unplug that and plug the rotary into this to get it to function properly. So the first thing that I did was cut the wires off of the rotary attachment and wired in this new plug. So I took out a screw and then I was able now, to pop it apart. All the screws have been removed. Oop. Okay, and the black part slides right out. And this is where our wires need to attach. Give yourself some slack on the wires and then snip it with some scissors. After it's snipped, you can take the grommet, the metal grommet, and slide it down over the wires and once it's wired up we'll pull that back up and attach it. Now I'm going to strip the ends of the wires. You can do this with just scissors or a razor blade. Just give yourself enough copper to be able to solder onto the new connector. Now on the connector you'll see numbers one through four and I thought I was being smart by checking the colors on the stepper motor that's already on the laser and matching them up to the same but in a minute you'll see that maybe I had some things mixed up. Here I've got all my connections soldered in, but you also want to be very sure that none of your wires are touching each other. So I'm going to take a tiny screwdriver and make sure that all these pieces of copper are separated from one another. Now I'm going to pull the grommet back up and screw it back in. We'll bring it over here to the machine and plug that into the spot where the old in that's not good that means something's wrong if it's doing that oh. probably a good way to burn up your motor well crap that probably means that we got some wires crossed well, at least you can learn from my mistakes. Now, after doing some digging, I found out that one is red, two is blue, three is yellow, and four is white. So I got my wires unattached and reattached. Now with it wired and correctly, turn on, oops. It's going to do a homing sequence. Let's see, it's trying to find home. You may have to press it up into the corner like that. I think it's still trying to home. Holy moly. Okay, now I got control of it. So the down arrow makes it spin that way, the up arrow makes it spin that way, which I believe is correct. Put materials on it. And it spins them like that while it engraves. Ooh, looks like the belt's gonna be a problem. They make the belt so high for some reason. That's better. It was getting really hot, and then it is still hot. And then it made a noise at a high pitched sound, and then the sound went away, and then it lost all control. Pretty sure the voltage going to this type stepper motor is not suited for. That larger size stepper motor there. So, uh. 
So what I found out later is that this motor is only suitable for 12 volts and my laser is putting out 24 volts, which in turn fried the motor. All right, so here's an update. I definitely believe that I fried the little NEMA 17 motor, which after further research, it makes sense because my laser engraver is actually using the larger NEMA 23s. As you can see the size difference here. Hence the reason why my driver overheated the smaller motor. Hopefully. Let's find out. Some things I had to buy was a new motor, a new motor mount, a new pulley for the shaft, and I'm going to try to reuse the old belt. We'll see if it all fits. Okay, while well, I wait for the soldering iron to heat up, I can't tell if that's focused or not, but on this chart here, it has pins one through four, and the colors for each are one through four up here, colors, black is one, green is two, red is three, and blue is four. Again, this is a NEMA 23, adding power. Yeah. Now with the Y axis disengaged, you just have to pull it with your hand, but you can use the controls for the, uh, what you would call it? X axis. So I'm trying to find the top dead center of that. This guy is my depth setter. This little piece of acrylic is how far away the wood's supposed to be, where the material's supposed to be. Look that. Oh my gosh. It looks much bigger than what it can actually fit. That's pretty amazing. It's definitely working, but I believe I overestimated the actual circumference, or the circumference on here is not actually correct. So the way we can dial that in is probably just create a line that's, say, one inch, and then we can measure it on here and see how far off we are. Rectangle that should be whew, two inches long. Let's see, I'm gonna start the measurement at oh lord, one inch. So we should be at three inches over here. Ooh, okay, it's been about three and a half. So the rotations are much further than what they need to be. So we're gonna try to calibrate that on here. All right. So here's what I'm changing on the program. I'm actually adjusting the roller diameter. The larger I make this, the closer it is to an accurate rotational, or the less it actually spins. So if I make the roller diameter bigger, it spins less. I'm gonna try. 0.85 now. So adjusting my roller diameter to 4.85 worked for me, but you can also adjust the number of steps on there as well to a lower or higher number to adjust it. Oh man, that's it. It's two inches right there, two inch rectangle. Hello world, and let's do it. Okay, so it's engraving backwards. Mirror vertically. There we have it. 
Hello, world. That is too cool, man. All right, I'm sending that cookie school logo. Sandpaper on that. That's good. Very clean. It's the darkness I'm looking for too. It only took about three minutes to engrave. That's awesome. Okay, because I could not stand having to remember to mirror my images every time vertically, I went ahead and reversed all the wires. So I took the black and the red out and I switched them. And then I took the green and the blue out and switched them. So it should reverse the direction of that motor now. We'll check it out. Wiring has been reversed. Logo is set to normal. No mirroring. Laser on. Boop. And now it's working perfectly. So for about $140, I've got my laser now set up with a rotary attachment. I look forward to doing more videos with the laser. I plan on doing a series called Will It Cut? So if you have any ideas of any materials you'd like to see cut on the laser, leave me a comment below. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it when those videos come out.